Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In this week's video, we're going to take a trip through a little bit of my family history. This bull has been in my parents' home for as long as I can remember. In fact, from the inscription on the bottom, my grandfather made it two years after I was born to remember a trip that they took as a vacation to the Redwoods two years before I was born. It is of redwood and was turned by my grandfather. To remember that and to add to my family history, I'm going to make this bowl out of cedar. It's from a tree that was in my yard in Portland, Oregon before we moved and make it to be similar to this one, give it to my mother. Now this one is from a cedar, going to be a very long block hanging out a long way from the spindle. A recipe for it to bounce off and fly away. So rather than have flying wood in my shop, I'm going to anchor it down with my steady rest. If you recall, this was uh, made from Baltic birch plywood and skateboard wheels, and it will do a great job to stabilize this plank hanging out so far from the spindle. But for now, so that we can continue my family history, let's make a, a bowl for my mother, one from her father, one from her son. I've trimmed back this block of cedar somewhat. This exposed some drying checks, but I think I can get my vase from the middle of this block. Even though it is quite large, I'm mounting it between centers. The drive center has many small teeth. It may not seem to be enough to drive such as large block, but actually it is. When I push too hard, the wood stops rotating, but the motor does not stall. It does tend to drill into the top of the wood. I started with my large gouge, but shortly switched to a bedan for some bedan practice. Peeling cuts with a bedan go quite well. With the wood round, I'm marking where I think the drying checks have stopped. Then waste away the wood, but leave enough for a large diameter tenon. With the tenon formed, I still have excess wood that I need to cut off. I've parted down this part way, but I'll cut the remainder with a saw. Now I've put the large jaws into my scroll chuck. I'm reversing the wood into these jaws. With the diameter of this block of wood and because it is soft cedar, I cannot trust my smaller jaws to hold it. Invariably, there's a bit of wood to trim off to get the wood round to the new axis. Then I'll waste away the end with its drying checks. Now I'm removing the tailstock. This wood is heavy and hanging out a long way from the chuck. I don't trust it to stay put. I've had enough wood fly off the lathe, but I don't want this heavy block flying off and hitting me. So I'm bringing out my homemade steady rest. With a little support out near the end, I'm more confident that the wood will stay in the chuck. But still, do remember your face shield. So now I'm going to hollow the top. This is gouge work. I'm finding that much easier to do from the opposite side of the lathe. I just need to be ambidextrous. I'd like to cut more into the side grain, but I don't always have the control to be comfortable. So I'm using a combination of cuts. Some peeling into the side grain, some like a cross grain bowl. I'm finishing out with a heavy bowl scraper. But then, I had to leave it for two days. When I'm back, I'm disappointed to see drying checks in the bottom of the bowl. I'm marking them. I guess I'll just have to go deeper until they are gone. I'll focus on using the heavy bowl scraper, then sand the interior.
Now I'm moving back the steady rest, but I still want the additional insurance. I'm marking the depth, then adding a little more for the bottom. Now to shape the exterior of the bowl, then sand. I'm now removing the steady rest. With the bowl sanded, I want to make the groove detail at the bottom of the bowl to be a little crisper than what was left after sanding. I'm addressing this with a small skew. Then continue to form the neck and base of the bowl, then sand. With the bowl still on the lathe, I'm applying walnut oil. Now to address the foot. With the foot so large, I want to hollow it a bit also. I've wrapped the rim with masking tape for protection from the jaws. This base barely fits into the jaws. It's hanging out a lot again, so I'm mounting my steady rest. Then easy does it to hollow the foot. The side grain peel cut is working better at this scale. Then sand and finish the foot. Then sign. This was a mistake. I should have waited until after signing to apply oil to the foot. Since the oil is not dry, it affects the wood burning somewhat. Unfortunately, there are still some tiny drying cracks. Yet I like my bowl. I would think my grandfather would approve also. I'm giving it to my mother to enjoy for the rest of her life. I'll get it back when she passes. Now she can treasure both one made by her father one made by her son. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Then keep on turning. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>